Welcome back to the channel to lock where true strike is used and calligraphy rocks. A place where water is here to imbibe and those in the comments all like and subscribe. Today we're building the Grinch from the Grinch, whose knack for invention will help in a pinch. His fiendish ways make walls easy to climb, and this whole video isn't going to rhyme. I really hope you don't think that I could sustain that for a full 10 minutes while also covering mechanics and abilities from Dungeons and Dragons. It's just too much. I already made like 20 extra videos this month. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be a master of infiltration, letting you creep into houses while people are asleep. That sounds kind of creepy, actually. Next, we need to be a master of machinery with tools and trinkets to make hijinks and heists a breeze. Finally, we need a motorized sleigh, something big and mechanical we can ride, at least till it breaks down and then we'll have a dog do it. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your dexterity and intelligence modifiers high. Dexterity will be number one. Even though you stick out like a sore thumb, you're actually pretty great at blending in. Intelligence next, you've basically turned your home into the Batcave, but occupied by a weird loner who hates the city below him. Oh, actually, that's just a normal Batcave. Strength after that, you're able to lift all of the gifts in Whoville over your head, and they're a generous bunch. Follow that up with Wisdom. Max likes you, even if dogs aren't famously hard to please. Constitution is a bit low there isn't any violence in dr seuss so i'm not worried about you getting split in half and we'll dump charisma you're ugly and stinky and people don't like you in the game if you're playing the Grinch. Not you as a subscriber. Thank you for doing that. It's the best present I could ask for. For your race, the Grinch is big and green, but he's also fluffy, so I think Bugbear suits him just a little bit better than Orc. Being a Bugbear gives you plus two strength and plus one dexterity, 60 feet of dark vision, long limbs to extend your melee attacks by five feet, a powerful build to double your carrying capacity, helping you haul an absurd amount of stolen goods. You get to surprise attack people, meaning that if you attack a surprised creature, you can add 2d6 to the damage of that attack. Seriously, add about 20% more malice and the Grinch would be a very scary movie. Bugbears get stealth for free and will tweak the Outlander background for athletics and animal handling skills, which will help you live at the top of the mountain with nobody but your pooch. We'll kick things off as a rogue for four skills from the rogue list, like sleight of hand, deception, intimidation, and acrobatics, all useful for infiltration, or at the very least to lie to children who catch you. You get expertise in two skills of your choice, letting you double your proficiency bonus with two skills. Athletics and stealth would be my picks. Dealing with the locals sounds like a drag. Rogues also get sneak attack, letting you add a d6 of extra damage to an attack roll when you have advantage or an ally within five feet. It's not in character yet, but we get a lot of gritty reboots lately. I guarantee before the end of my lifetime, there is going to be an attempt to make Dr. Seuss books into horror movies. I don't want it. I just think it's going to happen. Actually, I kind of want it. It sounds like just the right kind of awful. Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. Obviously hide if you haven't cleared everything out of the room yet, but dashing and disengaging are always solid getaway options. Third level rogues can choose a roguish archetype. Thieves are good at stealing things thanks to second story work, making your climbing speed equal to your regular speed, and you can add your dexterity modifier to the distance of your running long jumps, helping you move from rooftop to rooftop. The Grinch has so much in common with Batman. What the heck? You also get fast hands letting you use an object as a bonus action or pick a lock with your thieves tools the breaking is generally the hardest part of breaking and entering your sneak attack also bumps up to 2d6 fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement more dexterity will make for better sneaking and stabbing if you add stabbing to the character more of a challenge for the dm but what if you ran a game where leaving a trail of bodies in your wake was a bad thing Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you reduce incoming damage by half as a reaction, as long as you can see the source of damage. Putting up Christmas lights is a regular cause of injury. I'm sure taking down hundreds of sets in one night could cause some muscle sprain. Your sneak attack damage also bumps up to 3d6. Sixth level rogues get expertise in two more skills. Intimidation and sleight of hand would be nice for scaring locals and picking their pockets before you even start your mass heisting. Seventh level rogues get evasion, letting you take half damage from failed deck saves and no damage from successful ones, which might be useful if you you've got flammable fur and your point of entry is a chimney. Sneak attack, 46. Hooray for that. 
8th level rogues get another ability score improvement making a capped off dexterity modifier a possibility and your stealth modifier plus 11 at this point and plus 17 at the end of the build i don't know what cindy lou who would be but that passive perception has got to be off the charts Ninth level thieves get even better at stealth thanks to supreme sneak giving you advantage on stealth checks if you only use half your movement so that's advantage plus 13 yeah cindy lou must be an inquisitive with the observant feat and capped wisdom expertise and perception otherwise you're not getting caught she'll be a detective in the horror movie reboot don't worry your sneak attack also bumps up to 5d6 10th level rogues get another ability score improvement or a feat will get resilient in strength for plus one to the score and proficiency with saving throws to stop us from getting knocked all around falling off of roofs tends to hurt 11th level rogues get reliable talent meaning the lowest you can roll on a skill you have proficiency with is a 10 before adding the modifier so your minimum stealth check is 23 athletics is 21 heck your minimum deception is 13 and we dumped charisma this is really good for roleplay heavy campaigns and your sneak attack goes up to 66 so even if stuff's got to fight the grinch the grinch can fight back 12th level rogues get another ability score improvement letting us cap off our intelligence modifier before we start multi-classing into a tinkerer the best tinkerers by the way artificers because they specifically get an ability called magical tinkerer this lets you take a tiny non-magical item and add something funky to it like a little audio or visual message or a little light on one side you get spells and cantrips mending puts two pieces of something back together which should help you patch up the sleigh once we get one create bonfire creates a bonfire in a five foot cube that forces dexterity saving throws on creatures in that area dealing 3d8 fire damage to those that fail i'd say you could also use it for lighting your forge or for covering your tracks when you crawl back up the chimney for your first level spells disguise self lets you change your appearance for an hour creatures can see through it with an investigation check against your spell dc which is eight plus your intelligence modifier and proficiency bonus you can only get one foot taller or shorter but i don't think the who's will know santa's height jump triples your jump distance for a minute which pairing that with your second story work lets you jump with your entire movement speed after you dash big jumps are fun jump more in your games second level artificers get infusions which are special toys but not the kind you'd steal from children things like a bag of holding which is a bag that weighs 15 pounds but can hold up to 500 pounds for a bag like the guy you're copying is santa also delivering presents the night you steal them are you just like directly behind him does he care I'm starting to think this dr seuss story wasn't concerned with gritty hyper realism a rope of climbing is a rope that you can command to pull you up like an escalator it's kind of a funky item it has a health pool i honestly never fully understood it but i think it makes climbing easier enhanced defense lets you add one to the ac of a set of armor i'd imagine a santa suit would be padded leather finally enhanced weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon making it magical in terms of overcoming resistances would i call a scimitar a saw and a christmas tree a treant sure i always stretch in these videos i'm basically a yoga instructor third level artificers can choose a specialty battlesmiths get a steel defender which is a medium construct that can move 40 feet per round there's a whole stat block for it in the eberron book this is going to work nicely for a sleigh since it has higher movement speed than you do even if you can't quite mount it yet because it's still medium sized still this thing can heal it can attack it can give other people attacking you disadvantage not to mention you get to use it to get your sneak attack off for the grinch horror movie the grinchening you're also a battlesmith giving you proficiency with martial weapons and you can use your intelligence modifier instead of your strength or dex as long as the weapon is magical but that's not really a you thing fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement more intelligence will help your machinery and give you a better sleigh even if you can't quite ride it yet but you can at the fifth level of artificer thanks to the enlarge reduce spell letting you increase a creature's size and the damage of their strength based attacks by 1d4 also giving them advantage on strength checks and saves so you could use this to make your sleigh big enough to mount you could also reduce your size giving you disadvantage with strength checks and saves and a d4 penalty to your strength based attacks it's not a good idea but if you need to get smaller to slide down a chimney i could see it being useful as a battlesmith you also get extra attack here letting you attack twice instead of once with your action really the bulk of your damage is going to be coming from sneak attacks but this can let you try for a crit to chop down the tree extra fast six level artificers get tool expertise giving you expertise with your tool checks you've got proficiency with thieves tools smith's tools tinkerer's tools disguise kits those would all be great speaking of disguises for this level's infusion a cloak of elven kind gives creatures disadvantage to see you and you get advantage on your stealth checks effectively making supreme sneak pointless move your whole speed gloves of thievery add plus five to your sleight of hand checks and your lock picking checks so as long as the lock isn't magical you're gonna get it open seventh level artificers get flash of genius letting you add your intelligence modifier to a creature's ability check or saving throw within 30 feet of you as a reaction an amount of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier you're always within 
within 30 feet of yourself, so how does a minimum of 32 on a stealth check sound? It sounds good to me. But you know what? Maybe you were wrong. Maybe the Who's deserve a little cheer. Maybe you need the ability to drag a town's worth of gifts down a mountain in record time. Enhance ability will help with that, giving a creature you choose advantage on a skill check of a certain type. If you choose strength, you also double their carrying capacity. Dexterity removes the falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less, and constitution gives them 2d6 temporary HP. These benefits last for an hour depending on your concentration. Quadrupled carrying capacity would be about 960 pounds for you, which is almost as much as I lift, bruh. Our capstone is the 8th level of Artificer, letting us cap off our intelligence modifier for more flashes of genius and better flashes of genius, not to mention a sturdier ride down the mountain to save Christmas. But are you truly good enough to save Christmas? Well, now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, your skills are absolutely ridiculous. Reliable talent, four skills with expertise, and tools with expertise as well, helping you get things done without fighting. You're also very mobile with a climbing speed, massive jumps, and a mountable buddy if you've got the spell slot for it. Finally, we might not have set out to deal damage but 66 sneak attack and ways to set that up with your slay extra attack and a magical weapon you're going to be hitting pretty hard for your weaknesses your charisma skills are mean so you might have to grow your heart three sizes to win over the locals you've also got limited spell slots and both your second level options require concentration finally your hp is bad with slightly more than 100 meaning that if someone catches you breaking into their home they might make you regret it but the jokes on them you already regret it Take all the skills you developed while being a villain and use them to make this the best Christmas ever. It's never too late to try and make a change for the better, and the best time to start is right now. Hopefully you all had a wonderful holiday. We'll have another six builds coming out this month, so make sure that you're subscribed, and you can even join the Patreon if you want this character sheet and a bunch more. Also, sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.